In March 2017, Nintendo literally switched the game when they launched the Nintendo Switch. This hybrid console allows you to play home console quality games on the go thanks to the built-in display along with the dock system that it also comes with. Since then, Nintendo has come out with a number of varieties of the Nintendo Switch, including ones with different color schemes. The Mario edition was actually really pretty. I almost bought one, but I didn't. They also came out with a dedicated handheld only version called the Switch Lite. Now, since both of those models came out, Nintendo has listened to consumer feedback and, well, they've switched things up yet again. And that is what we're going to talk about here today. This is the Nintendo Switch OLED and this is designed to basically take the Nintendo Switch through the next half generation of consoles. And Nintendo has a, a habit of doing this. Going back to the original NES, you had the NES toaster and then you had the top loader. You had the Super Nintendo and then the Super Nintendo Junior. The N64 they had the fantastic colors that came out and, well, for most people you didn't see a difference. The NS1 to NS2 serial number, which for the modding community, the NS1 model number, you can use Voltar's excellent RGB mod. And for NS2 numbers, you need other mods to be able to do that. The GameCube had a difference in the removal of the digital output. We know the Wii had the Wii and the Wii Mini, which the Wii Mini did not have backwards compatibility or online. Even the standard Wii, there was a version that removed the GameCube ports. The only one that really didn't see any kind of like midlife change to it was the Wii U. Hey everybody, Gary here with Rocksaw Productions. Welcome to this episode here. One of the first ones in our new studio, as you can see, it's kind of blank on the walls, we are getting there. Make sure you check out some of our other videos, including our unboxing of the original Switch and the Switch Lite, where you can kind of see what we're gonna eventually have up here. We're gonna have a TV back here, and racks with games, all sorts of stuff. So make sure you go ahead, hit that subscribe button too. That way each and every time we do upload new content, you are kept the most informed and up to date. And what I wanna know from you here today, when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, are you interested more in the Switch OLED, in the original, or the Switch Lite, let me know. Now, for me, looking at the Switch OLED, there weren't a whole lot of compelling features added to this model that really wanted me to upgrade or replace my original Switch or you know, my wife's Switch Lite. So what we're gonna do in this episode is we're just gonna go through and we are going to unbox this. We are going to do a separate video kind of going through accessory compatibility. We're gonna check out third-party Joy-Cons, third-party controllers. We are going to also check out things on the Switch OLED like the excellent Fixture Gaming S1 just to see if it fits. So we're gonna go ahead, hit the photo bench, and check this out. Let's go get started. So here it is, we do have the white version of the Switch OLED on the photo bench here now. Uh, they do have two color variants on here. We have this one here, and then we have the red and blue. I went with the white simply because, well, my Switch has been white since 2018 is when I installed this mod on it. And I'm really kind of interested to see how close this, and this is a bass stop case, looks to this here. Uh, and we are gonna compare it a little bit to the original Switch and the Switch Lite. Uh, one thing I will say, this box is tiny compared to what the original Switches was. Um, it, the overall footprint from my understanding, and we'll look at this again in a second, is that the Switch itself, same basic size, maybe a, a tick wider, but this is a considerably smaller box, so good on Nintendo for that. A couple things here pointed out on the back is the fact that, you know, tabletop mode with the, you know, more robust kickstand, the TV mode with the new dock, and then handheld mode with the Joy-Cons and everything too. Let me know down in the comments, I have never once used the Joy-Con straps on my Switch uh, Joy-Cons. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever used that yourself? So, looks like you open it at the bottom here, and, well, there's the Joy-Cons on the top. We'll pull those out for you. Pretty nice looking there. And then there's the right Joy-Con, which also has the IR camera in the bottom. I think this is our Switch itself. It is. And one of the things I want to point out, the back of the Switch is just black, or the Switch OLED, that is. So the only color, quite honestly, is the Joy-Con. So between the blue and the white, the only difference is the Joy-Con color. The system itself, exactly the same. 
lift that tray out of there. We do have manual safety guide in here. So here it looks like we have the dock. I'm gonna set the box aside as we pull additional accessories out. And yep, there is the dock. Now, one thing I have to say that I wasn't expecting and you'll never see this. Why is that not hinged? Okay, I don't like that. Nintendo, why did you remove the hinge? I don't, I don't like that. But this kind of has a textured surface to it where the original Switch dock was completely smooth. So uh, there are some differences there. And the hinge, Nintendo, why'd you get rid of the hinge? That, I, I don't get that. Um, now also inside the dock, and we're gonna lighten things up for you a little bit here. So here you can see the biggest improvement for many is going to be the integrated ethernet port way down in that tunnel right down there. You still have your HDMI output and you have your AC input, which is USB-C. So you do lose, again, bringing the original switch dock in, you do lose a standard USB port there and the HDMI is moved from the bottom up top. Uh, so there are some changes to the overall layout on the dock itself. Now, looking face to face, and we're gonna have to put this back on because I don't like that. And then I, okay, that that's dumb. There's no reason for that. But let's look face to face if there are any differences here. And it does look like the new dock is slightly, ever so slightly taller at least one length, so I guess it would be wider, not taller. Uh, instead of having four little rubber feet, I don't know if anyone else, because I honestly have not watched anybody else's video on the Switch OLED. Uh, this is rubberized here, so a lot less uh, prone to slipping and sliding around than this one here. And yes, I do have my Super NES style faceplate on here, where this is just Stormtrooper white. On this side, you do still have your two USB ports, the same as on this here, but obviously white versus black. And then they have redesigned the tunnel for the cables to exit where it's more of this half moon shape or quarter moon shape versus just kind of an L or uh, tetranomo, shall we call it. Okay, so there's the dock. Next up in the box, we have a, an HDMI cable. These are like four to six feet long. I've got to say Nintendo's HDMI cables are actually pretty good. I like theirs a lot. They're, they're pretty beefy, they clear picture. I like them. Now, up next is the only power supply I will use with a Nintendo Switch, and that is Nintendo's own OEM power supply. It just, it's PD3 compliant. It's one of those where it just works. It works right, you don't have to worry about it. Now, if you are gonna use a third party dock, just use this power supply. So I gotta say about that. Uh, I think this is the Joy-Con grip. And it is, I don't think there's any differences between this Joy-Con grip and earlier ones. Um, I actually pulled my other Joy-Cons off the rails. I just wanna see if this fits any differently and it doesn't appear to. Now, I am not gonna hook these Joy-Cons up to the Switch OLED simply because I don't want to pair these to the Switch OLED. I'm gonna keep these on my original Switch for the time being, at least. And I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of the Joy-Con grip or using the Joy-Cons as a Pro Controller. I would honestly, there's so many really good third-party pro controllers if you don't want to drop the money on a Nintendo one. The KMD one is one of my favorite. Uh, the Retro Gaming Labs one is excellent too. I've checked them both out. I will have links down below if you want to go ahead and check out reviews of either of those pro style controllers for the Switch. Last thing in the box is gonna be the Joy-Con uh, bungees or whatever you want to call them, just like what the Wii had. I never use them. I've never used mine at all. Now, one thing I do wanna test out here is like I mentioned, I do have the original Switch here along with the Switch OLED, obviously. I wanna see, first of all, okay, that works, beautiful. Now, will the Switch OLED fit into the original one? Now, one thing I will say I've noticed already, and yes, I have a third party case, but having used this since launch, even with the original back on it, this has a bit of a textured feel to it, whereas the original Switch ones had a very similar slick feel to what this case that I have here on. 
And let's see how this fits. Goes right in now. There is some overlap here. You can see that right there. Um, so I'm not sure if this would work with the Fixture Gaming S1. For example, let me put that in the actual dock and put this in the dock that it came with. And here you can see you can't see any overhang. So I think that is going to mean that this will not work with the Fixture Gaming S1 out of the box. Now, a couple other things I do want to compare between the two different switches. We're going to set the docks aside for now. Now, one of the biggest things that's little but a big deal is the way that the uh, kickstand has been redesigned on the Switch OLED. This is very similar to like a Microsoft Surface or like I have a Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 and it has the same type of deal on the case. This is wonderful. It's infinitely adjustable. Uh, I can put it at whatever angle that I want and it's I can kind of tap on one side or the other. It's not going to flop over. With just the single little kickstand here, um, it's a fixed position. It's not the most stable. I've never had it fall down, but I don't play in tabletop mode a lot either. Uh, definitely a welcome, welcome redesign. And not sure if you can see it. Here you can kind of see the bezel on the side here uh, where they're almost the exact same footprint width wise, but there you can see the bezel and on here, much, much narrower. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to see here with the lighting. I can definitely see the bezel is basically from there to the edge is the width. So very, very thin bezels on this, which is nice. Um, on the top, you still have your power button, which has been slightly redesigned from a round button to oval shaped and feels like you'll be able to get that a little bit easier. Volume rocker looks to be uh, redesigned slightly as well. The fan exhaust looks to be a little bit wider. Headphone in almost the same spot. The game card slot. Still kind of flimsy, not a huge fan of that design, but I mean, it works. Um, and then finally too, one of the things, the major things I would say between the Switch OLED and the original Switch, onboard memory on the original Switch, only 32 gigs out of the box this 64 so you do have twice the onboard storage with both of them you can add external sd cards like i have one here i want to say it's a 128 gig it might be a 256 but i'm pretty sure this one is only 128 and i have recently filled this up with all the downloads and whatnot that i've had well i did on a recent amazon sale i picked up this 400 gig uh, micro sd card for specifically for this application and I want to say I paid under 40 bucks for it on sale. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, now they have changed the, the layout of the SD card slot on here slightly, if I can pop this out without ruining it. So on the original Switch, it just went under the kickstand right there. On the Switch Lite, the micro SD card was right under here. On the Switch OLED, it's still under the kickstand, but it's going at a sideways angle versus up and down. And we are just going to drop our micro SD card in, click it in, we're good to go. Now, I haven't charged this up at all. What you've seen here is basically all of my experience thus far with the Switch OLED. Now I am gonna go ahead and connect the Joy-Cons. Mmm, much, not a stronger, but a more resistant click, I would say, than the original. It does feel wider, I will say that. It definitely does feel wider. And we are going to power it on for just a second. I'm going to do a separate video on, like, transferring your data and whatnot. And I've already kind of done that on the Switch Lite. You can check that video out right up there. Um, very vibrant screen, even just the Switch... That's actually really bright. So popping the kickstand up there, and I'm gonna turn on my Switch uh, original real quick, just so you can kind of get an idea, side by side of the difference in real estate that the two displays have. And of course, that battery is dead, so I can't do that. Um, but th this is a substantial increase. I guess I didn't anticipate that much more width between what the original was and what the the new switch OLED is. And I mean, 
that's vibrant. I, I like that quite a bit. Now, I am going to do, like I mentioned, a separate video just talking about accessories. That, that is an upcoming video. Uh, but one thing, like I say, for me, I really just want to know, will it work with the Fixture Gaming S1? I cannot wait to test this out. I don't think it's going to work. I, I just don't off the top of my head. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to slide off the Joy-Cons. Now this is my fixture S1. This is the Founders Edition. And, oh, back. Yep, will not work. That is a bummer. But word is the guys and gals over at Fixture Gaming who make the excellent Fixture S1, they are coming out with a new version for the Switch OLED. So that is good to know. We're gonna go through and finish our setup and we're gonna wrap things up. So there you have it, our first look and unboxing of the Nintendo Switch OLED. What do I think of it? Well, it's interesting. Again, for me, I don't like playing the Switch, the original one, in handheld mode. For me, it's just been too wide, and this is even wider still. If handheld mode is a thing for you, if that's important to you, I would probably recommend trying and holding this before you buy it. For me, I find the Switch Lite a heck of a lot more comfortable in handheld mode than the original Switch. That means that some of the benefits of the Switch OLED, that better display than that kickstand for playing in tabletop mode, might be lost on you. So you can possibly save yourself some money and get yourself some great games instead of spending more money on a system with benefits you may not take advantage of. Now one thing I did want to show you real quick too is this is the Skull & Co dock that I have here and it's working with the Switch OLED. So uh, I do have my account now set up on here. So we're just gonna go into Super Mario Brothers. Working absolutely perfectly as it should on here as we expected that it would. Overall setup, pretty easy. One thing I would highly recommend, go ahead, already have your Nintendo account set up and have your smartphone or tablet handy so you can go ahead, scan those QR codes to get your account and everything set up on here a little bit more quickly and easily. Uh, the display is beautiful. There is no argument about that. And it does appear that at least a lot of accessories will transfer over from the original Switch to the Switch OLED. I'm bummed out that the Fixture Gaming S1 doesn't work. Hey guys, how about a Fixture Gaming S2? Two, Founders Edition, I want one. Sign me up for it now. It is my absolute favorite way to play the original Switch in handheld mode using the Pro Controller, and I know it's something they are already working on. I will say a few other things that I have noticed. Seems like the Wi-Fi might be a little bit quicker than what the original one was, and we're gonna have to wait and see how battery performance and everything is the more that we use it. Now, we are gonna be doing a whole lot more in-depth with the Switch OLED as time goes on here. We're gonna be talking about how to go ahead, transfer your save data, get your My Nintendo stuff loaded on here, and again, we are going to do a separate video all on accessory compatibility, and we're gonna go through controllers, docks, uh, earbuds, things along those lines. And, oh, that reminds me, it did have to do a firmware update uh, after I got done setting up my account. This does have Bluetooth audio now right out of the box, which the original Switch and the Switch Lite also have recently added. Now, if you do have any other comments or questions, as always, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. You can also go ahead and email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. Now, if you are looking to pick up modern or retro games, accessories, controllers, and more, head on over to castlemaniagames.com. The cool thing is Ryan will be getting in the Switch OLED in the near future, at least at the time of this filming. By the time you watch this, he may already have them there. He also has first run games for the Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox, Series S, and X. Actually, it wouldn't be the Series S because that's the all digital one. And the Xbox One, S, One, X, Xbox One, 
Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo systems. How about that? He's got those available on the site for you. And when you purchase anything through CastlemaniaGames.com, you earn what's called Castle Cash. It's his rewards program where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases. And Castle Cash, it is just like cash. So if you've got 20 bucks in Castle Cash, you have 20 bucks to spend at the castle. And you can use promo code RockSolid10 to save you a little bit of money up front as well. And let's say, for example, you do want to pick up a Switch OLED. He even has convenient payment options available through a firm. Thank you, Ryan, for everything that you do for the community. Now, like I mentioned, we are going to be doing a whole lot more with the Switch OLED. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're kept informed and up to date with everything we have going on with the Switch OLED and with what we're going to be building out here in our new studios. We have a lot planned. There's going to be a TV back here. I promise you that. Now, if you do want to see, you know, any other videos that we've done on the Switch, the Switch Lite, different docks, different accessories, um, how to go ahead and set up Bluetooth audio, reviews on different controllers and more, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rocksaw Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.